Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Pen Habit. I'm Matt Armstrong, and today is going to be the third in our mini-series of how to adjust your pen to get it to write the way you want it to. Uh, in video one, I talked about adjusting the ink flow. I highly suggest you go back and take a look at that one before you get to polishing, because if the ink flow is not where you want it, polishing your nib is going to be a waste of time. Uh, likewise with alignment, which is video two. We talked about alignment. Alignment is 90%, 85, 90, 95% of, of problems with scratchiness of nibs. So before you get to polishing, make sure you check the alignment as well. Um, the, the third and kind of final stop for me is polishing the tip of the nib. So uh, you'll hear these terms thrown around a lot. There's scratchiness, and I define scratchiness as when the in, inner wall of a tine scratches into the paper. It feels kind of like it's digging or almost ripping the paper. You can also get some of that if, for instance, you've got an italic nib. The italic nibs might have sharp corners on the edge, so it's going to feel like you're digging into the paper. Uh, feedback is the term I use, uh, sometimes feedback or toothiness, is the term I use that uh, describes the interaction between the polish of the nib, how polished the nib is, and the paper. Now this is a, a, a tricky thing to deal with only because there are so many variables. Um, if your ink is lubricated, you might get less feedback. If you've got a very slick paper, you might get less feedback. Or conversely, if you've got a dry ink or a dry um, or a, a very rough paper, you, you might get more feedback. And so it's going to give you the sense that your nib isn't as smooth as you want it, even though that may not be a consistent experience. Um, so fix alignment, fix the ink flow first, and then dive into dealing with this, the polish on the tip of the nib. I would recommend you use an ink you're very familiar with and a paper you're very familiar with. When I am polishing my nibs, I always, always, always use either Rhodia or Clairefontaine paper um, because I know what those papers are like. I know, how, I know how I like my pen to feel against those papers. I also generally use uh, a fairly lubricated ink, something like an Eroshizuku ink or a Diamine ink. Uh, something that's got a decent bit of lubrication. I don't want to over polish uh, because I'm using a really dry ink. Uh, so along those lines, or or I don't want to under polish because I'm using a very wet ink. Like for instance, my favorite purple, Diatramentus aubergine, um, is a very, very wet, very lubricated ink. Aurora Black is another very wet ink. I don't want to use those because it's going to give me the the false impression that my nib is smoother than perhaps it actually is. So, all that being said, let's dive in now and talk about how to polish nibs. Now, you know, I've in, in previous videos, I've used my loop, um, which I bought from a pen repair place. I don't remember right off the top of my head. It's a 20x loop you bought. You can get handheld ones as well, uh, 15, 20, 10, 10x, 15x, 20x. I've got a 40x as well, but I like the convenience of just having this on my head. So I use this, but I don't use it for the polishing part. When it comes to polishing, you basically got a couple of different options. You've got lapping film, which are these. And these are films that you get. Um, I, I got these from richardspens.com, which is uh, Richard Binder's website. Uh, I, I bought them a long time ago. They come in two different varieties. This is the, I think, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, the green is the one micron grit paper, and the white is the 0.3 micron grit paper. This is what I call finishing paper. This is not what I start my polishing process with. Uh, you can, and a lot of people recommend you do use these to start your process with. I am not one of those people. I don't have the patience for that. Oh, in case I haven't already, please allow me to state once again that doing any of the work with these films or any of the other tools I'm going to show you in this video does have the potential of voiding the warranty on your pen and potentially doing damage to your pen. Uh, so please proceed slowly. Proceed at your own risk. I do not take responsibility for anything, any damage caused to your pens done by what I'm showing you in this video. You're on your own here. So if you're not comfortable with it, either practice on some really cheap pens or go slowly. 
Okay, so that out of the way, back to the other things. So we've got our lapping films. Uh, also that came with the Richards Pen set is this 12,000 grit micro mesh. And it's, uh, it's, a very, it's, a, it's an abrasive, but it's a very smooth abrasive. It's not one that, uh, that we're, will take a lot of your, your nib tip off. Those are great for finishing. Um, but that's not what I like to use. So what I like to use is this set of micro mesh pads. And these come from andersonpens.net. You can get them in other places, but they sell the whole set. And they sell them with this, uh, this color-coded uh, grit breakdown. So you get from very coarse, for our purposes, 1,500 grit to, down to 12,000 grit, which is the same grit as this that came with the Richards Pens. This is all that comes in the Richard Pens, richardspens.com set. Uh, the, the set that you get from Anderson comes with all of these. I prefer these for a couple of reasons. One, there's a lot more surface area because they're both front and back. And I generally tend to prefer to start with a lower grit paper. I, I don't like to spend my whole time on the 1200 grit and nothing else. Uh, particularly if I'm dealing with an, a, a scratchy pen that wasn't polished well or that wasn't uh, ground well. Um, you know, you can get the tines in alignment, but even if the tines are in alignment, if the tipping wasn't ground well or if the tipping was ground while the tines were out of alignment, once you get the tines in alignment, you could run into some issues. So I generally start up here, somewhere in the 2400 range in my grit. So what I'll do, um, let me, I'll just kind of walk you through this process here. Grab my pen, always do this inked. I always, always do this inked for a couple of reasons. One, it helps to lubricate the, the grinding process or the polishing process on your, your micro mesh. And two, you want to be constantly going back and checking the pad to make sure that it's working properly. So I'm going to stick this up here at the top of my screen. I'm just going to start. What I do is hold the pen the way you normally hold your pen, you know, in, with the grip you hold it and at the angle you hold it. And on the micro mesh pad, I just start doing some figure eights like this. And then I'll do some ups and some side to sides in both directions and some downs and some circles and half circles and zigzags. And occasionally, if it's a really bad problem, I'll actually write the alphabet. It's, this pen isn't so bad, so I don't need to do that here. One thing you want to be very careful of on these lower grit papers, like this 2400 grit that I'm working on now, it will be, it will take, it can take off quite a bit of material. So you don't want to do a lot of work before you go back down and test it. So what you're doing with this 2400 grit is you're knocking down any high edges. So if you've got a problem with um, with scratchiness, even after the tines are in alignment, the, the higher or the lower grit papers are actually what you're doing uh, to get rid of some of the scratchiness. Now, when you're writing with these lower grit papers, or when you're writing after you've done these lower grit uh, micro meshes, you're going to notice it doesn't feel very smooth. You're going to get a lot of feedback. That's because the tip of the nib is actually uh, is rough, has been roughened up. In taking off some of that material, you've taken off uh, the, the, whatever polish was on the nib. So it's going to feel a little rough, but what you don't want to feel is scratchiness. If you do, that's when you want to go back and try to take off a little more. The other thing to be aware of is when you're writing, roll the pen a little bit. So as you're doing your figure eights, do some figure eights with it on the side and a little bit higher than you normally would, and a little bit lower than you would normally write. What you're trying to avoid is forming a flat spot on the, the pen with hard edges. Because if you put edges on the outside of your writing, of the writing spot, the sweet spot, then you're going to get scratchiness again, and that's not what you want. So you just want to make sure you're kind of rounding off the edges as you go. Then what I do is I start actually skipping um, grit. So I just, I, I skipped a grit and I'm going to do the same thing on the next grit here. So just a little bit of writing, got some circles in different directions, rolling the nib, a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and then I'm going to go right on the paper. Test. 
Okay, so the ink flow is still good. Gotten rid of all of the, the high point scratchiness, really. Oh, there's a little bit there. So what I'll do is if I run into issues, I'll actually go back to the micro mesh and repeat the same action that gave me the scratchiness until it goes away. Okay, so that's feeling a lot better. Going to skip a couple of grits again. And this time I'm now down to, according to my legend, the purple, which is the 6,000 grit. Now here is where you really start to, to fine tune what you want out of your pen. Some people like their pens to have a little bit more feedback. I'm not one of those people. I like my pens super, super smooth. So I will go generally a little bit further than others might. But if you want a little more feedback on your pen, you just don't polish the surface quite as much. So uh, along those lines, I'm just going to go here and start doing some scribbles up and down, side to side, higher angle, lower angle. Little bit of figure eights and some circles, and we're back to our paper then. So we do another quick test. Nice. So that's feeling pretty good. Um, now I'm not going to skip the next one, which is an 8,000. You can see here it's an 8,000 grit. So now I'm going to go back to my 8,000 grit here, and I'm going to start doing the same thing. And here's where, if, if you're a little scared about taking off too much material, uh, you can start at a higher grit paper. It's just going to take you longer to do. And some people really prefer to do it that way because it's safer. Um, I am, there's a saying that my father taught me a long time ago. It's a fool that I was. I didn't know it couldn't be done, so I just went ahead and did it. And that's kind of how I've, how I've taught myself how to do polishing. It's, uh, you know, I've known, I've read that you really shouldn't push, you know, go up to those lower grit papers. I don't care. Um, you know, I just, I go a little bit slower, but it, on, on the actual polishing, um, but that works for me. So just be aware that if you don't want to take that risk, start at the higher grit papers, start at the 8,000, start at the 12,000 and stay there. Um, and don't don't go up through the grits like I do. So um, now one of the things you'll hear a lot. I'm going to do this little. Uh, you see here, see me doing these uh, this figure eights. One of the interesting things about figure eights. I'm going to go back to the um, this drawing I did in the other video. So if this is the nib tip, and we've got the hard edges on the tines right here and right here. A figure eight, especially a figure eight done with a little bit of pressure, can actually knock down the inside edges of that nib slit. Now, in very small amounts, that's a good thing. That will get rid of a lot of scratchiness. But if you do it too much, what you'll get is you'll get these rounded off edges like this. And that's called baby's bottom. And what that does is it essentially takes the point at which the ink can stop flowing due to capillary action and moves it further up the nib. So a lot of times if you're getting uh, ink skipping or hard starting, it's because you've got baby's bottom. It's either you're either running too dry or you've got a baby's bottom problem on your nib. Uh, if you've got a baby's bottom problem, you actually I would recommend going up to the lower grit papers and and trying to develop more of that flat spot getting rid of some, you know, knocking down some of the material so you can get the, the capillary action point to the edge. Um, if your pen is still writing a little scratchier than you'd like, even after you're sure the tines are in alignment, um, a little bit more of that figure eight thing will actually knock down the inner walls just a touch. So I'm going to do just a little bit more here on the 8,000 grit. This way and this way, some zigzags, maybe vertical and horizontal. And let's go back and write another test here. Now that is writing much, much more nicely than it used to. Um, finally, I'm going to go to the 12,000 grit and do the same thing I have done up to this point. Now the 12,000 grit for me is really where you get to start to 
fine tune the final the final feel of your nib. Make sure you roll the pen from side to side. Make sure you get higher angles and lower angles. Uh, you just got a really nice sense of what's going on there. <laughs> Keep it light on the 1200, especially as you're doing the figure eights. You don't want to over polish the interior, as I mentioned, and get, give yourself a baby's bottom issue. So now I'm going to go back and write test a couple times as I do. And man, this is starting to get nice and smooth. So that's really, that's probably where I would stop because it still gives you just enough feedback that you know you're writing on paper. But, uh, you know, I don't often take it on to the lapping films, which are an even higher grit than the, than the 12,000 grit that you get from the micro mesh. But for, uh, for entertainment's sake, here I am. So I'll, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the green one. Can't see that. And do the same sort of thing here. Kind of smooth out the nib a little bit. Higher angle, work your way down to a lower angle. Same side, up and down. Circles in both directions. And some more figure eights. Again, very light. And you want to test it one more time. That's the key. Test, 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 test. You want to go back and make sure that you're always, you don't do too much. It's very hard to put nib tipping material back on. It's very easy to take it off. So just be careful when you're trying to smooth your nib because you're actually taking off material. So you want to go slowly and test along the way to make sure you're going in the direction you want to go. So And I am feeling like this is probably going to be good here. So we've got... Oh my gosh, it's such a different experience. So there's still just a, a just the whisper of feedback on this nib, but it really is just a whisper of feedback. It's smooth. The ink flow is lovely. It writes very, very well. Uh, it certainly writes better than it did when it came to me. And considering this is a, a sub $10 pen, it writes better than pens that cost 10 times as much a lot of times. So these are skills that if you're serious about fountain pens, you really should learn how to do. They're not hard. You just want to go slowly and take your time. Now, there are other things you can do, things that I'm not particularly uh, well experienced in, but I've done a couple times. For instance, if you run into problems with the inner tines being still being too sharp, you can actually press down lightly on the tine and rub that against some micro mesh. So if I were to take this pen, and let me show you what I mean here. But if, if you know, perhaps in going in this direction, I'll show you here, going in this direction, it was still a little scratchy. I could push down slightly on the tine. I don't know if you can see that. Where it will push the tine down and expose that sharp ed sharpened edge. And then I'll just rub it a couple times against the micro mesh to knock down some material. I generally only do that on very light uh, grit micro mesh, on high grit micro mesh. And then once I've done that, I'll go back and, and smooth it out because I may have knocked it slightly out of alignment. Um, I don't do that often, but every now and again, if I run into a trouble spot on a pen, I will occasionally do that. And then back to testing once again. So there you go. That's how I smooth my nibs. Um, like I said, there are, there are lots of ways to do it. People will have opinions. I'm sure there are several folks out there who looked at the fact that I started with a 2400 grit uh, paper and said, no, don't do that. And there's some certain validity to that. Um, I've done this on enough pens now that I feel comfortable starting with a higher grit because I have a sense of how much work needs to be done to a nib to make it what I want to do. If I know that it's still going to be problematic, um, I, I could spend half an hour working on 1200 grit paper or 1200 grit, grit micro mesh and then go to the lapping films and get the same result. Or I can spend five minutes starting at 2400 and very slowly working my way down 
to the higher grit papers. So that's my process. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Um, hopefully the microscope camera on the earlier videos and some of the overhead stuff will give you a better sense of how to do this. Um, it's a really important skill to have, one that has been invaluable to me and has allowed me to take really inexpensive and lackluster pens and make them just sing. So hopefully this has been helpful and we will see you next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you very much for watching.